God bless you all. Thank you for being here with us today. And I'm sure you've heard, I, I couldn't imagine how many times I've heard the verse quoted, the thief has come to kill, steal, and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And the next verse says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. So that abundant life is not some cheap thing, some just an ideal. It's deep. It's uh, it at, at its roots for you and me to have the abundant life. There's a deep price paid for that abundant life. Jesus has given himself physically, gave himself to be, to leave heaven, come to earth physically, and be, give himself, pour himself out, be misunderstood, hated, loved and cherished, all of it. But this abundant life, I believe is a real thing. But there was a concept I, I lacked. And in lacking that concept, I missed a lot of the abundant life. And the concept is, is that he means what he says. So that means anywhere, everywhere, all the time. He wants you and me to partake of his life. And so when you are in the midst of a challenge or adversity, which he has told us also exist, and when you push away from that challenge to go get the abundant life, I think you might be making a mistake. And the mistake is that his intent is to meet you Whatever that thing is, his intent is always to meet me where I am. Not leave me there for sure, but his intent is always to meet me in the middle of it. And so when, when pain comes, I'm, to, I'm supposed to be dragging pain to God. I'm not supposed to be running from pain. I'm supposed to be, I'm supposed to be like you, like, and the pain starts chirping at us, yapping at us, telling us things. Making us, it, 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 we feel it, we don't like it, and so we want to avoid it. And in avoiding it, we're actually, instead of just bringing it into the presence of God and letting God interrogate it, letting God speak to it, letting God, God, what, what is going on in my life, but bringing him in. So bringing this, if something's chewing on my foot, dragging, dragging it with me into the presence of God and saying, You're, I am not going through this alone. No. No, God, that thing's chewing me. This thing's chewing me. What's going on? I believe the madman of Gadara, the, the most demonized person in the Bible as far as we know, learned something. I need to drag this mess into the presence of God. Abundant life. A few weeks ago, um, but before I do that, join me in this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts, our trespasses, as we forgive our debtors, and, our and those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Your kingdom come. Paul, go up. Go step into his kingdom. Yes, amen. And your kingdom come. Sometimes it feels a little bit more like I'm stepping into something. Sometimes it feels more like I'm pleading for it, begging for it to come here. Either way, your kingdom come. Your kingdom arise. 
The kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Sounds like abundant life to me, by the way, just saying. So, as I said a few weeks ago, if, and you may or may not have been here, so I will refresh that commonly I think people often think of if they, if they came to a sign like that one you're seeing on the screen, it's like life this way, death this way, and they would think of it like that. Which path are you on? There's a fork in the road, or there's a split in the road, or I came to a T. Which way do I want to go? And I want to go towards life. Uh, I, think, I think we think like that. And I think that's, I want to go towards life. His name, by the way, among other things, Jesus' name is life. So I want to go toward life. And life is in him. I want to go towards the life he has for me. I hope you want to go towards the life he has for you. God made us, all of us. God created humankind and he made us. And he had his hand in your birthing and my birthing. He had his hand in who I am and what I am at the deepest level. Even when I didn't know it and didn't understand it, he had a, and he had a plan and has a plan for my life and your life. And that plan is to share life with you. And that plan, you were made for something. And in some ways, like uh, uh, for many of us, it's hard to relate to a call, the call of God, a call. I am called. So, so God made me know, and, and he makes people things, and he made me know that I was, I was his, I was, had a, this thing, and he was going to put me in ministry, but really, and he, and he did, and I accepted it, and I moved toward it, and I had to sort a bunch of stuff out, but as I was moving towards it, fundamentally, all he was really doing was he was calling me to share life with him. You're in this world, be in this world with me. That's what it was. So ministry really was, really was something he wanted to do with me. And it's taken me a lot of places, and it's, and it's been, um, I, I think of it because I have perspective with age, perspective. So with perspective, I look at it and I say, God, you saved my life by putting me in ministry. You, absolutely it was painful. Absolutely my feet got singed regularly. I was constantly having my feet held to the fire. I was uncomfortable a lot. I failed a lot. I, and by failure, I mean I didn't meet the standard that I was believing for, I was hoping for. My ideals were getting smashed all to pieces. All kinds of stuff was going on. But he met me in it. Ministry, professionally speaking, you could take it or leave it. I don't know. Sometimes I don't know. But God, you got to have him. And his plan for your life, I'm praying today that it will get clearer than it's ever been before for you. Like, what does it mean for me to walk with God? If you can't answer that today, I want you to take it home and wrestle with it. If it makes you uncomfortable, I want you to be uncomfortable pulling it in right close and saying, God, I got to know. I got to know. What am I here for? I got to know. What are you trying to do with my life? I've got to know. I got to know something, God. Where are we going? Because life matters. And the life that he has for you, you can't have the life that I mean, you can have fun without God, but it's going to backfire on you. <laughs> it's eventually going to blow up on you and stuff. You can have highs and you can have giddiness and stuff. But deep fulfillment, I don't think you're getting without Jesus. And he made you for that. So it turns out that something in us has to die for that life. And if we don't understand, if we can't imagine going for life, we're going to have a problem because the next thing is up. How many of you know that pain is a powerful motivator? I mean, I've, I've said... Oh, God, if I was tortured, I'd give it up. If there's a secret in here, that just, just, you know, start 
ripping something off or just tase me a few times or something and, and like, it's okay, okay, you know. I don't, I don't know how much I could take. So if you don't have a cause that's worthy of living for, you're going to miss so much that God has for you. If, you. if you don't understand, like he's saying, come on, I made you. I made you for my, the, the God of the universe made you and me for his glory. To bring glory to this God of the, this great God of the universe. In our shortness, our tallness, our maleness, our femaleness, our confusedness. Our high IQ, not as high IQ, our frailty, our everything about us, he intends to meet us in this thing. And God, give us a picture, help us see it. When he says, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He met me, I believe, he met me for all intents and purposes in the dirt. The Bible says man was created from dirt, and when I came along, as I was coming into my teen years and adult years, I acted like it. Where'd you come from? Dirt. Looks like it. Acts like it. In fact, looks like, looks like a dump, not just dirt. Looks like you came from a dump where people put all their bad stuff. And you are a messed up person. I would. But God met me there. God has chosen the foolish things of the world. It's okay. That it's okay. It's, it's not a fun to look in a mirror. I continue. I've, I heard many years ago somebody say it's the most depressing thing on the planet is a mirror to be able to look at yourself. I think there's a lot of truth in that. So it can, it can bum you out bad. But bring it all to God. So I bring what I see in the mirror. What do you see in the mirror? I'm seeing, I'm seeing my wrinkles. I'm seeing my bald spots or, or the uh, tuft, you know, or whatever, you know what I'm saying? It's like, can't tell you how many times I've thought about just, I've, to, I've, I'm, I, <laughs> bick it, you know, just like, because <laughs> it's, it's like, it's like, do you like that? Not exactly. But it is who I am, and the abundant life is here, and the abundant life is not a full head of hair. Like what? Pastor Paul, you're a little tiny man. The abundant life is not being a big muscle man. Why can't it be like Barbie? The abundant life is not being like a physical human Barbie. But the abundant life is meeting Jesus in the life you got. Quit thinking it's about weight. Or it's about my past. Jesus did something to resolve the past. Completely. To satisfy. He did something to take shame out of us, off of us. But we've got to bring shame to Him. Not just walk around with it. Not just try and shake it off. Not something like that. But actually drag it into His presence. Because it's telling you something. And He's telling you something differently. And I, we've got to hear, we've got to hear what he's saying and not what shame is saying or not what, not what sh fluffiness is saying, not what something else is saying, not what <clears throat> baldness is saying or not what age is saying, not what sometimes peers are saying, not what movies are saying. You are made for something. Oh, Holy Spirit, God, you want to reveal more and more. Every one of us was made for something, for you, made for a purpose. Lord, it's a lie. It's a lie. Pardon me for being blunt. It's a lie that life sucks. Life without you, horrible. But you said in us, our life, in the world, we would have troubles. and you, we have peace. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, that's for us. That's for people watching on the live stream. 
but it's also for us to be ambassadors of that peace. And God, we're, we're, we are testimonies of that peace. That's what you called us to be, a testimony of the abundant life, a testimony of overcoming, a testimony of victory over darkness and demons and other things. That's for us. Maybe we're not walking in that today, but it is your will for us to walk in it, for all of us to walk in freedom, not just one of us or two of us, or not just for, for uh, uh, an ordained minister to walk in it. Oh God, ordained ministers have failed so much. God, you have a calling, and I believe your words from Jeremiah embody it, for I know the thoughts I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. Then you'll call upon me and pray to me and I will listen to you. My brothers, my sisters, the day of listening, him, you knowing he's listening, that's, that's part of the abundant life. He's knocking on the door. He wants you to have it. And you'll call upon me and go and pray to me and I'll listen to you. And you'll seek me and you'll find me when you search for me with all your heart. Boy, I have not found that easy. Search for him with all your heart. Wow, that's, that's not very many words. But I've looked at that many times. I've read, so many times I've either thought that verse or read that verse. Jeremiah 29, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14, I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. Addiction is not supposed to stay. We don't have to have it. We don't have to have it. Addiction to buying stuff, addiction to drugs, addiction to sex. We don't have to have it. Addiction to power. We don't have to have it. Then you'll call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. Oh, that sounds so beautiful. And you'll seek me and you'll find me when you search for me with all your heart. How many think God are, are saying something like this? God, help me search with all my heart. Help me look for you. Help me look toward you with all my heart. I'm telling you, I'm encouraging you, don't be afraid of it. I believe the heart, your heart and my heart have a, I don't know how far I'm going to get, so that's, that's part of my world, I guess. Or should get. In Psalm 27, David said, One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Paul said, and I referenced it a few weeks ago, Paul said in Philippians 3, he said, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Power. And the fellowship of his sufferings. Hmm. <laughs> Being conformed to his death. Hmm. Do I have to say that? Do I have to think that? If by any means I might attain or partake of the resurrection of the dead. Life. The life that's exhibited when Jesus' body is raised from the dead. He said, if that same spirit dwells in you, he will put life in you. Abundant life. So I can't be getting weak need when pain shows up or when the prospect of pain shows up. I believe inside of us, inside of you, inside of me is something you really, 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 really want. And if it's not the right thing, you need to know. And if it is the right thing, you ought to get it. But you got to go for it. God has a plan for you. Go for it. Go for it. God didn't make you just to be 
lukewarm. He didn't make you just to be. In fact, he, in fact, we understand the Bible says that if you're lukewarm, I'll spit you out. He doesn't want lukewarm. He wants, he wants us. He wants my heart. He wants to be number one. Did you, did you know or have you ever thought that your number one, your number one, I believe most likely is going to happen? I believe we get to our number one. But it's a shame if it's the wrong number one. I felt like in my life, God has challenged me. Who's number one? Many times, over and over again. And I'm just telling you, I didn't feel like I had great answers. I didn't feel like, you know, like I just, you know, with boldness and courage, I stood there and said, you are, you are, you are. I was like, oh, God. I I'm, looking, I'm looking, it's like, what would you do this week? And I was like, oh, um, nothing worth speaking about in church, you know, or whatever, you know. It's a, it's, and stuff, you know, it's like I, I got grumpy. I got mad with people. I got, I, I complained. I did, well, Flesh, flesh, flesh. And that's without adultery, by the way. That's without robbing the church or robbing people. That's, with, that's without cussing and foul language. That's just with a selfish, selfish and limited way of thinking. And not seeing a big enough picture of him and seeing too big a picture of me. You know, just destroy you. Another way of saying what is your heart's one thing is saying, what is your, I was made for this. Because it, it's there. I think, I, I just, you know, as I said that, I looked and I saw you, Brenda. Hi, Brenda. And I thought, I, and I just remembered a statement she said many years ago to me. And she said, told me how much she loves to cook, right? And, I'm, and, and I know that there's truth there. And I know, I know she was made to cook. But recently, she's just um, is taking over, the, taking the lead position in our church's spiritual freedom ministry team. I feel that same thing. Like she's, Pulling into this and pushing into this. Whatever fears and anxieties, probably has got some. Pushing through some stuff to get to where that is. But there's something in there saying, I was made for this. I was made to set people free. Dean, I look at your face. I'm so glad to see you today. And I um, appreciate you very much. And I appreciate that um, God put a fire in you. And you admit you don't always understand everything that's going on, but you want people to get free and to meet Jesus. You want him, you want Jesus to be known. And so, and it's become consuming. There's a lot of people that would say that's a bad thing because, like, you're neglecting your boat <laughs> you know, or something, right? And, I mean, I'm saying that, but, but people think like that. People think like that. Lots of people think like that. And I'm not against the boat. Maybe you can use this boat and have fun with it. I'm, I'd be glad if you can. The ministry boat. It can happen, you know, whatever. Because God will meet us anywhere. He did give us all things to enjoy. But he didn't mean for us to enjoy them without his presence. Like, what? He gave us all things to enjoy, so what are you doing? I'm just enjoying stuff. Where's God? I don't know. Like, what? What are you thinking? Like, this, this heaven seems to me to be resounding with, I want to share life with you. I want, I want the God of heaven saying, I want to be with you. Desperately, deeply, I yearn for you. And, and I'm saying, you're not going to tell me how many cookies I can eat or something, are you? 
Like, if you're going to come, you're not going to start telling me what to eat, are you? And I'm like, missing the, the Lord of the universe loves me. He loves you. Jesus' name. <clears throat> I don't know if this will help you or not, but maybe it will. <clears throat> Years ago, maybe 10-ish, somewhere in there, we created a mission statement, which I'm still gladly living with. So it's at least a glimpse of what I think at least makes my heart go pitter-patter. ACF's mission is to live in the light of Jesus. I've got, I've got to, I've got to, I've got to. Nothing satisfies. I like movies. They don't satisfy. I like sports. I enjoy watching sports. It's not doesn't do what Jesus does, though. I like food. I'm not exactly prepared to stop eating yet. So. But I was made for more. I was made for more. You were made for more. Our mission is to live in the light of Jesus. He, turns out he is the light. And that light does shine in darkness. And the darkness of this world does not comprehend it or can't snuff it out, can't choke it out. I don't want to partner with choking it out. Light of God, live in me. To live in the light of Jesus. And to live in the light of Jesus means revealing God's love. If you are not like, a, like if you don't witness and stuff, you don't share your faith, maybe you don't know. Maybe you don't know how much life comes back to you. When you partake of Jesus and start stepping into it in some way, how does he want to be here? How does he want to be with me? What does he want to do with my neighbors? To be willing to feel his love for people. Let your heart become at home with his love for others. And I do think it brings pain and it brings life. Oh, it brings life. Revealing God's love, restoring true hope. In Jesus' name, every one of you that's here, every one of you that's watching, Everyone in this county that's a Christian naming his name. Every church that is his church. Lighting up, lighting up, lighting up. Come alive, come, come light up. And all those people around us that are in darkness. Imagine if we're a, in the spirit, if that light is shining. The hope that could be restored that they're not junk, they're not trash, they're not throwaways. I'm so glad you did that. Should have done it at the beginning, you heard it, nudge, nudge, nudge. The party box, also known as prodigal box, is open, and it should be open. It's so simple, it's so simple, but God's, God's heart is open to people. Revealing God's love, restoring true hope, and transforming lives. I don't exactly want to be addicted to people being transformed, but I sure do love it. Like, wow, that's fun. And I do think of it off, off, often. That was fun. That was fun. Could you, would you be willing today to God are you calling me now I say I know he is but it doesn't exactly matter that I know he is it matters that that thing that I couldn't describe I, I'm remembering it I've been a Christian for a few months 
And just this thought kept coming into my head. I didn't know where it was coming from. It was coming from God. And it was pushing into my heart, kept pushing on me. I'm putting you in ministry. I was like, you I'm telling you, my first response is, no way, <laughs> no way. I, because I still had more identity with being a dirtbag than I had with being a priest. But maybe you do too. Oh, Jesus. I can't promise you pain free. And I would encourage you to, to push into that dichotomy that wants to be pain free, that wants pain to be definitive in the choices you make. I know there's pain for a lot of reasons, but I need to be, my identity, our identity is in Christ, not in pain. I don't want to be pushed around by it. Imagine that, a little person not wanting to be bullied. <laughs> well, isn't that the truth? <laughs> so, so here I am. So could you, would you be willing to step forward today? And I don't, mean, I don't mean the altar. You can come to the altar. But I mean step forward in the sense of saying, God, I've not been, I've, I've not been as aware as you want me aware of you have a plan for me. God, I'm afraid of that question. I'm afraid of what you're going to do. If I say I want to do your will with my life, I'm afraid of what you're going to tell me to do. I can't say this for anybody else, but I could say this. I could look back and I could say, I'd be afraid of what would have happened if I didn't. I love so many things about my life, but I'm truly, there's a few thorns in it. Okay, and I, and I can feel them sometimes, and I don't like it. But I can't imagine living without a yes to God. A yes that is so clear and so dominant that it begins to wake up a no that starts looking at things that are attacking my yes to God and say, no, <laughs> you got to, no, no. Yes. And sometimes I say it with tears and sometimes I say it with joy and sometimes I say it by faith. Yes, God. Let's stand together and let's, let's partake, if you're willing, let's partake of communion together. If you need, I see, I see some ushers bringing them. If you need the communion elements, put your hand up. They'll come to you. If you need elements, probably if you didn't get them, Anybody, just wave your arm and we will find you and make sure you have them. I hope today that you can hear God love, that God loves you. I hope you can hear it. Jesus loves you. I hope you can hear it. I hope you can hear how much he wants you and he cares for you. That he gave himself to you. So that moment at that communion table... That Passover meal with his disciples, that very first time, and he took the bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he told them, this is my body broken for you, that you can, you can hear Jesus said, I, Jesus is saying, you are worth it for me to die. I give myself, I give, I'm giving myself up not just for somebody, I gave myself up for you. I love you. Many times I could hear that and I would pray, Lord, increase my revelation of your love. Lord, that sacrifice merits a response. And Lord, with your help and with your grace, you have a plan. Please get me over whatever is in the way. Please help me get over it, God. Get over whatever, whatever I'm afraid of. Help me get over it, God. Draw me over it. Pull me over it. Woo me over it. Trick me over it. Do something. Help get me through it.
because I ought to say yes to you fully and completely. Help me do it. You chose me. You chose us. Today, Lord, we receive the gift and we choose you. Let's partake together. He took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant. Jesus came to earth, human like you, left heaven, God, came to earth, took on human flesh, and in human flesh, he said, this is the new covenant. So now he's standing on the man's side of the covenant fulfilling the covenant so you and I can be, have the right and have it be right for you and me to be sons and daughters of God, to, for you and me to be temples of God. You're a temple of the Holy Spirit. This is the new covenant made in my blood which is poured out for you. Remember me. Thank you, God, for not avoiding pain. Not avoiding suffering. Thank you for when you prayed for a way, Jesus, to, and you said, Father, if it be your will, let the cup pass. That was your temptation, your great temptation to avoid pain. I think. Lord, help me because I still avoid pain. Sometimes I do. Help us, God. Help us, God, to see that you're calling us to be with you, this, the great God, the great lover of our soul, that that's what we're after, a prize. We were made for you. We're after a prize, and you're the prize. In Jesus' name, let's partake together. Thank you, God. Jesus' name. I believe it sure could be today. And I want you to just listen, listen for Holy Spirit. God, I... Is there something before I leave this place today that you want to say to me? or you want to seal in me, or you want to do in me. I'm just saying, ask him, Holy Spirit, is there something else you want to do right now? And if there is, let's do it. And if there isn't, then in Jesus' name, you know, be blessed. So, Father, as I close this service, I believe that heaven is open and your heart is open. And I believe our hearts desperately, desperately need you. That you are the answer to every challenge we face. And so God, and that you're calling, and that call matters. There's somebody that you would send every one of us to. Every one of us. You, there's people you would have us just be with you, with them. And that will speak to them. And you yearn, you yearn for it, God. So I bless the yes, the yes to be deep, to be real, to be clear, to not just be a denial of stuff, but to be an embracing of you, God. Somehow the image of you getting clearer. So we're embracing you. We are embracing life with you. Thank you for it. And if you... Just feel like Holy Spirit wants you to pray. You can, you, can, you can just stay in your seat and pray and I expect music will be playing for a bit and, or you can come to the altar. I promise to not try and put you in a ministry or something. 
you know, I want God's will for you, not my will for you, so I promise not to try and forge jam anything down your throat or anything, whatever. But I believe he's worthy of your yes, your best yes. I believe he's truly worthy of it. And I believe inside you, you want, you want to give him. If you're not giving him that yes, you want to. So I bless you to step over that line, step into him in a fresh way. Jesus' name, Lord bless you all. You are free to go. Or...